the Lord's Prayer for the Church. Amen. I think it's interesting um, on the Lord praying this prayer. Uh, we consider the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and that sort of thing. But this prayer is literally a prayer that Jesus prayed for the church, that the church might become one as he is one. And that word there means to be joined together. It means to be linked together. And, and so God wants us to learn to um, um, work together And as far as his church and his kingdom is concerned. It's amazing because people don't want to do that. There are more than 20,000 different Christian organizations in America. And there's only one God. And it's amazing how that people want to have their own little little organization somewhere. When Jesus just prayed that we might become one as, as he and the Father were one. And I find that, that the church is going to come in these last days, is going to come to the conclusion that they need one another. Whether you understand it or not, you need the person next to you, that you need them somewhere, they need you. Uh, when you get into trouble, you're going to call somebody. Hello. When you get into difficulty, you're going to ask somebody to help help you pray. And especially if you get in a situation where no, no matter what you prayed, you're not making success, you're going to call somebody who knows how to pray better than you do and say, we need some help here. So we find that, that Jesus is um, ministering to the people. He's getting ready to leave the earth. And he's saying to the Father that he wants to be glorified as he was uh, before he left the earth, as he was when he was glorified with his Father. And he wants us to be glorified with him. And so when we die, it says here that he is the only one that can give us life eternal. And so when we die, we get to go be with him in glory. And as I've been saying, um, we are the richest people on the planet, whether you understand it or not. If you leave out of here tonight, you are going to be, if I call it this way, please forgive me, filthy, stinking rich. Can I get a witness? Amen. Walking on the streets of gold, going, walking through the gates of pearl, every foundation of the new, a new Jerusalem is of a special stone, very precious stone. Uh, you get an, a white stone with a new name in it, only you and Jesus know. You get to eat off the tree of life. And you get, amen, to drink out of the river of God. Amen. Now, to me, if heaven is a flat rock with Jesus standing on it, it's good enough for me. Amen. Because that's where I want to go. I want to meet Jesus. Amen. But the reality of it is the fact of it. It's we're going to go to one of the most glorious places that any man could ever go to. It is more Fabulous, fabulous, and even the temple that they built, the temple uh, in Jerusalem, when uh, David helped uh, Solomon by getting materials to build the temple. And when they built the temple, it was fabulous. In fact, they made it prefab. There wasn't a sound of a hammer or any other kind of tool. It was interlocking, and they put it together. It was fabulous. The altar itself was solid gold. Hello, the altar was solid gold. And that cost a couple bucks today. Can I get a witness? Amen. It wasn't 14 carat or 16 carat or 12 carat, solid gold. The walls were overlaid with gold. They had engravings all through in the, the, the temple, etc. Uh, it was one of the most fabulous buildings that ever existed on the planet. And to tell you how fabulous it was that when uh, Israel was disobedient to God and the enemy army came in to take it over, they literally burned the walls and got all the gold out in between all the bricks and all that sort of stuff. It was so laden with, with riches and with gold that people, not they burned it to the ground. I mean, they had to get every little speck of gold that was in the building and all the jewels and stuff, the Priest garments had jewels in them, fabulous jewels. If you went by the jewelry store, amen, today and looked in the window and stuff, the jewels in the priest's vest will make that stuff look like stuff you get in a dime store. Hello. Hello. 
I mean, fab, they were fabulous, just beyond what you can imagine. That was the temple here in the earth, and that's not talking about the one we're going to in heaven. And so God is praying for us, amen, that we might learn to work together uh, for the kingdom of God. Uh, the church has yet to do this, and I know that they will. I know it will happen because God said it would. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's really a shame <clears throat> that people don't work together. People want to do their own thing. And as I have found that it's amazing to me that people, uh, well, the, the way they read the Bible, if they read a math book like they read the Bible, they'd fail the class. They would just absolutely fail because they skip over scriptures. They don't want to do this. Mark out chapter 7 and we're not doing this one and forget that. We're not doing that. Well, it's not going to make you any better. In fact, the only thing that I can see that the devil did to get kicked out of heaven was pride. I can't see anything else that he did. He was arrogant. He got prideful. In, in Luke 17, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So it means as soon as he sinned, he was out of there. Just, you're done. Get out of here and you're done. And they kicked him out. We know the story. The, there's two-thirds stayed and one-third went with him, but they were all thrown out of heaven. And if they weren't thrown out of heaven, amen, they wouldn't be messing with you all week long. Can I get a witness, amen? They wouldn't be tormenting you, talking to you, telling you you're no good and you can't do this and you can't do that. Can I get a witness, amen? Someone said they're in hell. They're not either. They're walking on the earth messing with you, amen. One day they're going to be in the lake of fire, but right now they're walking on the earth. Amen. If you don't believe me, go ahead and read the book of Job. Amen. The first few chapters, you'll find out where the devil is. God asked the devil, where you been? He said, I've been in the earth, walking up and down in the earth. Amen. Where? Did he say, I've been walking up and down in hell? No. I've been walking up and down in the earth, messing with people, and I want to mess with Job. Now you got to let me get after him. Now y'all not listening. But anyway, he wanted, he wanted to get after Job, and God said, you can, but you can't take his life. And then we know on and on and on the things that happen uh, to Job. But I believe that, and, and I want people to understand, there is a difference here. Jesus said, I pray for the church, but I do not pray for the world. That is a, a startling statement. Because there's people that love the Lord and want to serve him and will serve him. And then there's a whole group of people that don't want anything to do with them and never will. And it's not going to do you any good to pray for people. I've had people tell me, oh, you need to pray for everybody. Well, I met some people that it is one big waste of time praying for them. Hello. Hello. They don't want anything to do with God. They told me, get away from me. I don't want to hear on and on and on. And I said, fine, I'll find me somebody that's interested. Amen. 